Hey everyone, welcome to yet another video. Today we will be talking about Easter eggs in Python. Believe it or not, Python developers or the creators of Python are really very, very, I would say humorous. Like for example, if you try to do a hash of infinity and negative infinity, it's not a coincidence that it comes out to be the digits of pi. <laughs> Alright guys, I think um, it's very much clear that we are going to talk about Easter eggs in Python. But other than that, I'll also be sharing three behind the scenes concept of Python that will totally blow your mind. So to begin off, I think the first one is the this pointer in Python. Now I know that Python does not have this pointer literally, but what I mean to say is that for Python, if you try to do and import this like I'm doing right now, oops. Yeah, so as you can see, it gives us uh, the Zen of Python by Tim Peters. It's it's like unbelievable. And um, I did share this with developers who had been working with Python for about three, four years, but they still did not know about this. Um, so what this is simple is better than complex, flat is better than nested and all these things. So these are 19 design principles. Um, and it's a collection of those guiding principles for writing programs that influence the design of Python programming language. And uh, funny story is that they were thinking to have 20 principles, but the spot for 20 is still open. Um, again, guys, to check out more such videos, make sure to hit the bell icon and subscribe. I am very excited that we are soon going to hit 100K subscribers. So moving on, um, the next one is import the hello module. And um, if you simply do a import underscore hello, double underscores over there, it prints out hello world. Now, this really made me crazy as to why this exists. But yes, you can find some reasoning. A quick search on it told me that this hello module is a frozen module intended as a test case for frozen module support. If you want to dig that stuff, I would put the link in descriptions. But in a nutshell, Python freeze utility creates a portable version of a Python script that carries its own built-in interpreter, basically like a binary executable, so that you can run it on machines without Python. All right, fly with Python. Here comes the anti-gravity module. So if you try to open import anti-gravity, if you write that down, it opens a Chrome tab and it's open a web browser basically. And it is a XKCD comic. It's a web comic for sarcasm, humor, romance. And you can see you are flying now. So it's a Python comic. Um, and this is weird that a Python import module can do that. And I would totally ask you to open this up and then basically have a look at that comic. All right. Notice the double underscores in Python. I think if you had been working with Python, you must have seen few places where this underscore stuff comes, double underscore comes. So here is something which will blow your mind. Now let, let me create, create a class viewer, which is having a constructor and it's saying self dot one, two and three. It's setting them to one, two, three numbers, but I am, I'm using double underscores and single underscores. So weird is a class and I'm, uh, oops, I'm creating an object. So A should be an instance of class weird. Now if I try to access one, it's working. But what do you think will happen now? Oh, it's weird, right? It's saying this has no attribute. Again, for three, it's not working. So what's happening? Um, so one is available, but two and three are not available. And if you try to do a DIR on A, you can see all the attributes of A. You can see that three and two have been prefixed by the class name, which is weird in this case, <laughs> literally. So. If you try to act, oh, oops, if you try to access two with a class name prefixed, it will work. And what this is known as is name mangling in Python. What essentially happens is that in Python, the interpreter modifies or mangles the class member names, starting with double underscores, also known as gender, and not ending with more than one trailing underscores. What it does is basically it prefixes the name of the class with an underscore in front, in this case, underscore weird is prefixed to those attributes which are starting with double underscores and not ending with more than one trailing underscores. So now to access those attributes, what you have to do is use underscore class name followed by the double underscore two underscore that you have created. I know that this is weird, but I think this is something that you should know. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys must not be knowing this. All right, here comes the hashing infinity. Now, if you talk about uh, Python 2, hash is a built-in function. 
and you can do something like hash 23.43 which is creating a random hash value you can again pass that as a string to float but what i mean to do is pass infinity as a float i will pass that and i do the hash of that again i will do that for negative infinity and you can see that in python 2.7 the positive infinity is hashed to pi and negative infinity is hashed to e we can check that from the math module as you can see these 271 and these 314 values are nothing but the digits of pi and e from the math module this is again not a coincidence and this totally blows your mind in the starting of the video we had seen that for python 3 for hashing positive infinity as well as negative infinity the digits are of pi and not e but in python 2.7 i think since it's 2.7 they have used negative infinity to map to e because it's 2.71 Anyways, guys, I think this was super awesome. I do have a few more things. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so if and else are the basic programming blocks that everyone studies. But I'm pretty much sure that if you had been using Python, you must not be knowing this. In fact, you can use else with a for loop. Let's see. So I'm having a function contains, which checks whether the number num exists in my array. So for n in array, if n is num, I print exist and break. Otherwise, you can see this else is not in line with if. The indentation for that is with for. So now let's see if it's working. Contains, um, let's say one, two, and let's check for one or yeah, exists. Two exists, three does not exist, right? So it's working correctly. And um, the thing is that if n is num, we print exist and then we break. So if you keep that else in indentation with if, so in, even if the first number does not match our number argument, it will print does not exist. But that's what we do not want to do. What we want to do is that when the complete for loop iteration has been completed, what we want is if none of the times if condition was true, only then go to else. And that is exactly what is happening over here. But it is something which as a programmer, it's not very intuitive for us to think like that, right? Maybe the first language which you're taught was C++ or something else. And those things, th I mean, things like these does not exist in that or other languages. Even for Python developers, I think most of them do not know this, but I think it's a very clean way of handling this. All right, I do have a bonus tip for you. If you use IPython, it's, uh, I'm sure that some of times you have to write long commands, you are creating functions. So it's very difficult for you to take care of the indentation and you might need to do a lot of editing. And now this is something which I discovered on my own as a mistake. So while I was writing a long command by mistake, I pressed F2. And the reason why I pressed F2 by mistake is that um, I use a drop down terminal. So when I press F1, a terminal magically uh, gets appeared on my screen. But by mistake, instead of F1, I pressed F2 and something beautiful happened. So I was writing a for loop in IPython. And when I pressed F2, it opened a Vim window for me and I had the line that I had written. So I was writing that for loop, so it is there. Now I can simply basically use the Vim editor features and write whatever I want to do. And then once I have written, so in this case, I am uh, printing the first 10 numbers and their squares. And once I have written everything, like this is a text editor, Vim. I'm sure you must have heard about that. So once I have done that, I can simply exit Vim. I know that you must not be doing this. So yeah, that's why I have zoomed on uh, on how to exit. And once you do that, it brings back the IPython console. And as you can see, whatever I had written has been put in line one and the output, as you can see, the first 10 numbers and the squares. All right, guys, I hope this video was fun. Um, I do have one last message if you are preparing for coding interviews as well as system designs. Now, Algo Expert has everything in one place. So go to algoexpert.io slash Rochet for discount, especially the system design course is launched recently and it's super awesome. So use the coupon Rochet for discount and I'm sure you are going to love this. All right, guys, I think this video was fun. I literally loved filming this. And let me know in comments what you think about this. Maybe there are some other cool Python features which I have not included. So please, please share in comments if you have any more ideas. I will see you in the next one, guys. Till then, enjoy the rest of my videos and I will see you in the next one.
Alright. 